I'm not standing in front of this person. I'm going to immediately start attacking, 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 attacking. Welcome back to another episode of Sand Fights, Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Chad Vasquez. I'm Logan Lowe. And today we're breaking down the 2003 Kill Bill Volume 1, starring Uma Thurman as the bride and Vivica A. Fox as Bernita Green. Let's not waste any time and get into it. All right, let's go. And delivery. Oh, knuckle sandwich. Boom. Big haymakers by Uma. Okay. A very exaggerated redirection by Vivica. And an axe kick by her, too. Okay. Nice up kicks. Up kick by Uma. Lots happening. Go fast. Ooh, mm. attack right to the knee, power backhand, power double hand to the face. Yeah, Captain hard. Kirk. Actually, in judo and jiu-jitsu, there is a similar takedown of throw, referred to as a tomoe nage. Obviously not exactly like that, but the idea. I like to call it a Captain Kirk. Okay, she's just trying a rear naked strangle, some issues we see, there's no legs involved, as we discussed before in the past. Is she punching the arm? Vivica's punching the arm. Yeah, not the best defense. Okay. That looks like a terrible choke. Yeah, so, all right, let, let's pause here. So, as discussed in past episodes, we went over what is required for a proper rear naked strangle. Points I've made, legs. Right. Legs are very important, and you can see clearly here, there are no legs, which is why there's not a fast knockout done by Uma's part. How fast could it happen? I've actually counted about like four to five seconds of a quick knockout. Now, why do you call it a strangle and not a choke? Strangles refer to pressure within the carotids. Chokes is a good term referring to pressure within the windpipe. Oh, right? so a choke is for air? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Ooh, weapon and time? Weapon yeah. time! Bam. Big, re big response back with, what's that called? A poker. A poker, okay. Poker. Yeah. Well, she poked her with that. Let's... Goodness, Chad. Bam, right into the curicle rack. Oh man, all the family heirlooms. Done. Done. You know what I like about this scene? You see a lot of people getting thrown through windows and they just stand up like, oh, it's no big deal. But you know, if you get thrown through a window or you have glass fall yeah, on it you. It hurts, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna get cut. That's just the nature of glass. That's, that's a nice little detail I like. All right, grab the poker, grab the poker, grab the poker, no. And now she's going into the kitchen empty-handed against a knife. She's spider-sensing it. Definitely, you see some of Quentin Tarantino's influence by all the kung fu films that he loved as a kid. Well, which this film, I think, represents. Precisely. And she grabs a pan. Chad, do you see that she's got a knife? Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Like she, so she knows she has a weapon and instead grabs an improvised weapon. Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, well, she's defending with it. Okay, so Vivica actually was able to disarm Uma by slashing at the hand. Mm -hmm. Uma counters by using her left hand to grab the weapon, but because now Uma's locked in, that enables Vivica to throw, what is a, that? A sidekick, side right kick. to the torso. Right, and then boom, okay. he launches her. Just comes <laughs> in, just, just jumps in, <laughs> yeah. Double forces it. All right. She's like, I have to cook dinner, you know, to finish this. <laughs> yeah, you know, cooking dinner's a big deal. Yeah, yeah right? Parent? Yeah, it's a big thing. Nice jump there, look at that. Olympic style. Okay, oh, Vivica's doing like an under siege. You guys remember our under siege video? A little come here action. And a little little Bruce Lee going on there, right? Yeah. Okay. And these are some strange stances. Okay, kids at home, do not do this. For multiple reasons, but poor stance work. So these are definitely bad stances by- Terrible. Uma. Yeah. For both of them. I mean, those are very kung fu-like stances. No one's trying to flank. It's definitely a director's choice because in a real fight, especially with weapons, you want mobility. You know, it's just like a boxer. You don't see boxers have these really wide stances because boxers need to move. And we're gonna talk about that in a moment. And, uh, ah, her daughter. Right. Vivica's character's daughter okay, arrives. Baby. Cool fight scene. Yeah, and today's fight scene really has something for everyone, right? We've got improvised weapons, actual weapons, striking, some grappling, something for everyone. Let's break all this down. Okay. Uma is now on the ground. And Vivica now, she goes into an ax kick motion towards the head, which Uma does block. It's a legit kick. You do see it more from a standing situation. Not the most widely used high percentage kick in, in overall fighting. A better option that Vivica could have done was just stop her out. Just keep it simple. She's right there. Bring your knee up and go right to the face. The idea of just doing this, there, there's no need for it. Just get straight to the point. But that gets defended, right? So what happens now? Vivica ends up now, in front of the guard. For me, this gets a bit interesting because this scene shows a perfect example of how legs are dangerous. What happens? 
Well, Vivica first hits in the groin. And then, because her head's leaning forward, the second leg hits around the face. So what should you know if engaging a down opponent when dealing with up kicks? Well, first, the stance. Bladed stance, good posture, lead leg, hands get involved, split the legs by taking your lead leg and putting it in one of the hamstrings. In a fight context, I personally prefer the straight hamstring to create what's called a head course position. From here, I can sit on that leg, keep my balance, throw strikes, and find a way to get past the legs to advance in the fight. That would've been a much better option for Vivica. In this scene, Vivica sees a downed opponent. She's armed. She now brings the full weight of the weapon to bear. Here, two-handed instead of one hand, two-handed reinforcing it, square stance, coming straight down, boom. I honestly do not think that she would have been able to stop herself from sustaining some sort of damage. Here, double hand, double force, boom, that's coming down. That is definitely going to cause damage to Uma. It was a good choice by Vivica to do that double-handed strike down, but it was a choice by Tarantino to not have it be effective, and I understand that. So Uma kind of performs a variation of a Tomoe Nage, a throw you see both in Judo and Jitsu. Here's the action, defender, controls the wrist here, and puts a foot right to the stomach. Because I'm over committing my weight already, it makes it easy for the uh, defender to lift me up. So here we go, that's the lift effect. And that's the throw that we see performed by Uma. So after the throw performed by Uma, Vivica does a big no-no. She turns around and exposes her back. It allows Uma to move forward into her rear naked strangle. An opportunity we have here is actually an opportunity to talk about choke defense. Vivica, has her hands at first to the hand, which is correct. The mistake that people do is grabbing the wrist, form, or bicep. This is not gonna work. A proper strangle will cut through this. Let's test it. One, two, three. <clears throat> so, that mechanic cuts through fingers. This is not the proper way in how you want to defend a strangle. Grab the hand, and both your hands should be doing that. If Logan, has a straight grip, and I only have one hand to work with, so be it. I shoot as far as I can to cover the hand like so and pull it down. Once I can free this guy, I reinforce it, and now I get two hands involved. This is a much better strategy that Vivica could have done in moving forward and defending that strangle, especially since Uma did not have any hooks. She can then combine this with moving her lower body and getting out, although, we see in the scene, she eventually gets out by using a poker and hitting Uma right in the head with it. So I guess that works too. One other note, Uma actually had a weapon in her right side. So note that this is a perfect time for an ambush without her opponent really fully realizing what's going on. If this was a true fight and Vivica starts defending what she thinks is the primary weapon, it's not the primary weapon. This is my primary weapon. Now we have ambush here and here. The fight ends. So when a weapon comes into play, in ambush, the person that is being ambushed is not fully aware of the gravity of the situation. Whereas the attacker is aware that there's a weapon that can be deployed and deploys it at the perfect time. This is where timing counts. She didn't say, oh, here's my weapon right away. She could have taken it out. Later on, we see that's exactly what they do. They go from ambush, which would have been a superior tactical thing, to duel, which as we've discussed before, is not a superior way of deploying a weapon. Of course, it was probably a choice by Tarantino to have the fight progress. So in this case, Uma is trained, very trained, as we saw in other parts of the film. And she just left the poker there and walked into the kitchen like, oh, let's check out what's happening in the kitchen. I don't believe that because Uma just acted like someone that didn't even do what a normal person would do, let alone a trained operative. She knew that Vivica was in the kitchen. And by the way, pro tip, if you are ever ambushed in your own house, your number one move needs to be to get out of the house. What if you can't get out of the house? What is your number two move? You go to your kitchen because that's where you keep all your sharp objects. Now, I understand that Tarantino was going for the kung fu entertainment aspect of it, but really all Uma had to do was bring in the poker at least and then have a disarm. You can have a cool disarm scene happen and then the fight can progress exactly as it was shot. Let's just say arguendo that Uma actually did in fact grab the poker and then she walks into the kitchen and then is attacked immediately by Vivica. Here, oh wait, stay back. 
at the very least, the instinctual thing would be to go, whoa, what's going on here? And at least keep them at bay. Of course, Vivek is gonna follow up with something, so she'll follow up with like a slap, here, right? Here. That would have made a lot more sense. If you're gonna walk into a room where you don't know anything that's going on except there's danger in there, you're gonna want something, right? Yeah, she's gifted with a long rod and doesn't know how to use it, like some people in the world. So at this point in the scene, Uma decides not to take the poker that she was just attacked with. She also decides not to take her own weapon that she's intimately familiar with out of her waist. Instead, she grabs a frying pan. That looks to be a cast iron frying pan. You know, those things weigh a ton. Yeah. We're gonna assume that it was not a cast iron pan, that it was a lighter pan. Even then, I don't know if I went against someone that was trained with knives, if I could move quickly enough to defend myself. This is a very awkward kind of weapon. It's, it's heavier here rather than where you're holding it. So it's not balanced at all. We're also gonna assume that it is possible. So we're assuming two things. One, the pan's not that heavy. Two, it's not a cast iron pan. So with those two things in mind, we're now gonna go and see how Uma defended herself against Vivica. Vivica comes in with a number one attack, then that was defended, then a number two attack, which was defended, a number one again that was defended, a five that was defended here. There was a number of number fives that she was defending against. And then as she came in here, I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure what happened. Here's the thing. Chad, can you push, put that against the um, pan? And I wanted you to push this out of my hand. There's no way that's coming out. So the only way that a disarm could happen is if she struck my hand and I dropped the weapon. So I believe that that scene was pure Hollywood. Uma basically dropped the pan to progress the narrative, where it's there for entertainment purposes, mm. but is not at all based in reality. Here we're in the final exchange between Uma Thurman and Vivica. And the stance is just odd. So uh, Chad, can you get into uh, like, Vivica's stance? Like this, right? So we're here. This is suboptimal for a number of reasons. In terms of Uma's character, note that she's purely defensive. And honestly, the best defense is a good offense. Here, she can't really retreat, right? She has to literally turn and run. Not a bad option, but she looks like she wants to fight, but is unable to fight. Look how back-weighted she is. Likewise, Chad, can you extend your arm? Yep. This is how Vivica's character was. This is a fencer's pose, and a fencer can do something like this. Why? Because of the length of the fencer's weapon. Here, this does not make sense. This is actually not considered a hammer grip per se, this is a saber grip, because it's forward. See that? If I'm Uma, and this is what I'm seeing, I'm going to a hammer or saber grip, and I'm gonna press the attack now. I can stay in the pocket, but I can just sidestep here and take that, and then flick out, flick out, and stab. It does not make sense for the two of them to be so defensive. One of them has to launch an attack, otherwise you'll just be standing there forever. Here the roles are reversed. If I'm Vivica and I see this, that someone's being very defensive, and they have it in an ice pick grip, I have a longer reach now, as we saw in our John Wick video. So once again, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna come in here. Boom. I wanna flank. So in the fight scene between Uma versus Vivica and their characters, I understand that the scene is greatly inspired by Kung Fu cinema, cinema, Kung Fu cinema. right? And so with regards to the hand-to-hand -hand portion, right. there are certain things that were somewhat in the right direction, but mostly compared to a realistic approach, not really there. Though it provided opportunity for me to discuss about some defense, which was showing to a certain degree, but not by a lot. Yeah, and to take what Chai just said and extrapolate it to the weapons portion of it, in terms of practical fighting, it wouldn't be done. Certainly not done by professionals. It might be done by people that were amateurs, maybe, maybe, but for professionals, no. I didn't believe any of that. So for me, I'm thinking it's a C. What do you think? I'm with you on that one. I would say for the hand-to-hand -hand portion, I'd go C as well. 